Okay, let's review what we've done so far in chapter three. Uh, we've identified four different types of angles. Corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, and consecutive interior. Then we found out those four angles, out of them, the first three were congruent and the last one was supplementary. In section two, we learned that if you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. If you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. And if you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, alternate exterior angles are congruent. We also learned that if you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, consecutive interior angles equal 180 degrees, or they're supplementary. That's what we've dealt so, with so far in Chapter 3. Let's look at what we're doing this section. In this section, we will attempt to do the opposite, or converse, of all the ideas we discussed so far. Originally, we said two parallel lines cut by a transversal equals corresponding angles congruent, or alternate interior angles are congruent, or whatever. You started off every time with parallel lines cut by a transversal. That's what you started with every time. Two parallel lines cut by a transversal, blah, 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 blah. I want you to look at these four new ideas. And I know that they're really small, but We'll be all right. Postulate 16 is the corresponding angle converse, meaning it is the opposite statement. If two lines are cut by a transversal, so the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. What that means is if you have two lines cut by a transversal, we don't know that they're parallel, but we do know that the two angles are congruent. If corresponding angles are congruent, then the, angles are, or then the lines are parallel. Originally, we started off with parallel lines and found out that corresponding angles are congruent. Now we're told if you have two lines cut by a transversal and corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. We're proving the exact opposite. If you look at alternate, alternate interior angle converse, you see the exact same thing. If you have two lines cut by a transversal and alternate interior angles, Notice how we have our Z, and alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Look at what we're doing here. Lines are parallel, lines are parallel, lines are parallel. We've gone from proving things congruent or supplementary to now proving the lines are parallel. Notice how the wording is the exact opposite of the theorems and postulates of the previous, that shouldn't be chapter, that should be section. If I back up, What I want you to see is we were proving angles congruent. Angles congruent. Angles congruent. Consecutive interior angles are still supplementary. But what they gave us every time were we had parallel lines. That was a given. That was something that they handed us every time. Now we're turning around and saying, okay, the angles are still congruent, but we don't know that the, the lines are parallel. We were given parallel lines and told that we had congruent angles or supplementary angles. Now we're told, all right, here are two congruent angles or two supplementary angles. Do they make parallel lines? It's the exact opposite, okay, or it's the converse statement. What we're going to do this section is we're going to take the information that we know about corresponding angles, about alternate interior angles being congruent, alternate exterior angles being congruent, consecutive interior angles being supplementary, and we are going to attempt to prove that the lines are parallel. Let me say that again. We're going to take what we know about those four types of angles, and instead of being told the lines are parallel so the angles are congruent or supplementary, now we're told here are congruent angles. 
prove the lines are parallel. It's kind of going backwards. But you'll find out that this is actually rather simple. Um, let's, let's look at this one. We'll call this guy number one. And in number one, we're given two different angles. We're given angle 3x plus 5, and we're given angle 65. Now, what do you notice about those two angles? I hope that you notice they are corresponding. Well, we're told to find the value of x that makes the lines parallel. If these two lines were parallel, what would that mean that these two angles are? If the lines were parallel, then corresponding angles would be congruent. Well, let's just, let's just assume that they are parallel and say that 65 is congruent to 3x plus 5. If I can solve for x and prove that these two are congruent or that they're equal, then I will have proven that the lines were parallel. Let me say that again. We assume that the lines are parallel. And if they are parallel, corresponding angles are congruent. If I can somehow prove that this side and this side are congruent, then I will have proven that the lines were parallel. We're assuming it at first, but we eventually prove it, knowing what we know about corresponding angles. So let's go through. If 65 equals 3x plus 5, I want to solve for x. Now I have to use my algebra. If I want to solve for x here, I need to get rid of this 5. I get rid of it by subtracting. When I do that, it cancels out on this side, and I'm left with 3x equals 65 minus 5 is just 60. I still want to solve for x here, so I need to get rid of that 3. The way to get rid of a multiplication problem is by dividing. If I divide both sides by 3, this side cancels out, so I just have x equals 60 divided by 3 is 20. Now, although I did solve for x, I need to plug it back in. Does 65 equal 3x plus 5? 65 should, should equal 3 times whatever x equals, plus 5. And I found out that 65 equals 65. Now, you know this as checking your work. But what you did by proving that this angle is 65 degrees when x equals 20, and this angle is 65 degrees, you proved that they were congruent. And by proving corresponding angles congruent, you proved that the lines were parallel. Notice how on any of these problems, we're not told they're parallel. We have to assume it. We have to guess that they're parallel. Now let's say that we couldn't find, we could not prove that these two equaled each other. Well, then the lines obviously aren't parallel. But let's, let's continue. There we used corresponding angles. Let's call this one number two. Number two. If I highlight them, just to see what kind of angles I have, I highlight angle 150, and I highlight 3x minus 15, what do you notice about those angles? I hope you notice that they're consecutive interior angles. What do you know about consecutive interior angles? They are supplementary. Well, you only know that they're supplementary, let me back up, you only know they're supplementary if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. Well, if we come forward, we don't know that they're parallel yet. So, we have to assume that they're parallel and we're going to try and prove that these two angles are supplementary or that they add up to 180. So I'm going to write my, down first my statement that 150 plus 3x minus 15 equals 180. I'm assuming it's true and I'm going to try and prove it. This is, uh, this is the same way mechanics fix vehicles. They run a bunch of tests and assume that something is broke. They fix it or replace it. And hopefully that solved the problem. And if it didn't, well, then they assumed or they predicted wrong. Not a big deal. It happens. 
we're going to assume that they're parallel in order to try and solve this. Well, when I solve this problem using algebra, the first thing I want to do is combine the 150 and the negative 15. 150 minus 15 is 135, and I just drop down everything else that I didn't use. Now I'm going to move this 135 to the other side by subtraction. Drop down my 3x. 180 minus 35 gives me 45. Now I want to solve for x. The way I do that is by dividing both sides by 3. When I divide both sides by 3, the 3's cancel and I'm just left with x equals. 45 divided by 3 gives me 15. And I know I'm going fast. If you need to, pause the video so that you can work out some of these problems. If x equals 15 in this problem, these two angles should be supplementary. So I'm going to take what I originally wrote down right here, this step, and actually I'm going to write that on a separate sheet of paper. 150 plus 3x minus 15 equals 180, and we solved x to be 15. And if I solved it correctly, if x equals 15 here, and these two angles, we had angle 1 and angle 2, if those two angles equal 180, then I will have proven that these two lines are parallel. You might be saying, this is a real backwards way to go. Listen, sometimes you don't know everything. You have to assume. Yes, these are consecutive interior angles. But we don't know anything else. If we knew the lines were already parallel, we could say, oh, the, this plus this equals 180. But we don't know that. We're trying to prove that they're parallel in order to be able to say that they're supplementary. And that's a whole lot of assumption. Let's go back. I substituted in x plus 15 into my x, and now I'm going to try and solve it. 150 plus 3 times 15 is 45, minus 15 equals 180. Solve it using the order of operations. 150 plus 45 gives me 195. 195 minus 15 is 180. I proved that that angle plus that angle, when x equals 15, is supplementary. Since I proved those two angles were supplementary, I proved that the lines were parallel. Now I know that this is a whole lot. We're kind of going backwards here and having to use algebra to prove a geometry statement. You know what? That's just the way it is. You're using algebra to, to prove a geometry statement. Here in number one, we prove, or we used algebra to prove that the angles were congruent. And we did. We proved that when x equals 20, 65 and 3x plus 5 are congruent angles, so the lines must be parallel. In number two, we assumed that the, the angles were supplementary. We used algebra to solve it and say that when x equals 15, this angle plus this angle is 180, so the lines must be parallel. I want you we're going to label these. We're going to call this one number three and this one number four. I bet you already knew that, didn't you? Um, I want you to try and solve x in both of them to prove that the lines are parallel. Now, notice right now we're assuming they're parallel. We don't know. But if we assume they're parallel, you should be able to solve for x there. Pause the video, solve number three and four, and you'll notice that we're kind of running on, out, of, uh, out of room. So we're going to do all of our work on this piece of paper. Number three, number four, squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Uh, I want you to solve number three and number four, knowing what you know about geometry and being able to use your algebra and solve for x for number three and four. Pause the video and do that now. Okay, hopefully you had enough time to solve number three and number four. Uh, if not, hit pause and go back and continue doing that. And if you need a little direction, just hang on and we'll, we'll solve some of them together. The first thing I want you to do is identify what kind of angles these are. And if you highlight or mark up that angle and this angle, you should be able to identify what type of angles those are. 
and they are alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles. Now, assuming that those two lines are parallel, you know that alternate interior angles are congruent. So you should be able to set those two angles equal to each other. And if they equal each other, then the lines end up being parallel. So the way that we go about that is by setting those two angles equal to each other. Here, we see that x should equal 180 minus x. We took one angle and set it equal to the other angle. Now we use algebra to solve for x. We add x to both sides. When we do that, these x's cancel out. We drop down the 180 because we didn't do anything with it. x plus x gives me 2x. Then I'm still looking to solve for x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And when I do that, the 2's cancel out, and I'm left with x equals 180 divided by 2 is 90. Well, then I'm going to check and make sure. The reason I have to check is because if these two angles, if this angle and this angle don't equal each other or aren't congruent, then I can't say the lines are parallel. Well, when I substitute x in as 90, I, replace, I take my equation up here, x equals 180 minus x, and I replace all the x's with 90. I get 90 equals 180 minus 90. And then if I simplify that, I get 90 equals 90. That is a true statement, which means that my original assumption must be true, assuming the lines were parallel. And now I can say, because I proved that alternate interior angles are congruent, the lines are parallel when x equals 90. Now let's say x equals 85. Well then this wouldn't be a true statement, and my original assumption that the lines were parallel would also be wrong. The only, way I, the only way I was correct in assuming the lines were parallel is if I can prove that they are equal or they are congruent when I found x. The same thing with number four. Number four, the first thing I want you to get in the habit of doing is identifying what kind of angles those are. So we highlight one angle and we highlight the other angle. And the angle that we di or the type of angle that we discover is an alternate interior angle alternate interior angle. If we assume that the lines are parallel, then we know that alternate interior angles are congruent. So we can set them equal to each other. 2x plus 20 equals 3x. This is one angle. This is another angle. If I set them equal to each other, I should be able to find an x. The way I do that is by subtracting 2x from both sides. When I do that, the 2x's cancel out. I drop down the 20. 3x minus 2x gives me 1x. If I divide both sides by 1, I get x equals 20 divided by 1 is 20, so x equals 20. Now I'm going to check that answer because I need this side to equal this side. I need one angle to equal the other angle. When I substitute 20 into my original statement, 2x plus 20 equals 3x, if I substitute in the, the 20, I get 60 equals 60. I assumed the lines were parallel so that my two angles were congruent. Because I proved the two angles were congruent when x equals 20, then I can actually say the lines are parallel when x equals 20. And again, this is I know that this is a lot, but think of it like this. We are going backwards here. Originally, we were told parallel lines cut by a transversal, and then you were told Alternate interior angles are congruent, corresponding angles are congruent, alternate exterior angles are congruent, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Now we're told, hey, here are two lines. If corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. If alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. We're taking that if and we're proving it here. We proved that corresponding angles are congruent, therefore, the lines are parallel. We proved that consecutive interior angles are supplementary in number two, in number two. So we proved, because con we proved consecutive interior angles were supplementary, we proved the lines are parallel. Then you did the same thing in number three and four. Proving alternate exterior angles are congruent, you proved the lines were parallel. Then in number four, you proved that alternate interior angles are congruent, 
therefore you prove the lines were parallel. If we look again at how we did that, whoops, whoa, I don't know what just happened, but if we look at what we did, we had to assume they were parallel first in order to set them equal to each other or in order to set them up as supplementary angles. Then we found what x equaled to prove our statement. If x equals 20, number 1 are parallel. If x equals 15, number 2 are parallel. If x equals 90, number 3 are parallel. And if x equals 20, then number 4 are parallel. You're going to do the same thing tonight on your homework, so let's go ahead and take a look at that.